Hi, how are you today? This is um, this is another interesting, they're always interesting case, but this is a really, really interesting case today of a possible dens in vaginus or a dens in dentate. Um, so, so it's quite a perplexing diagnosis process um, trying to work out, um, you know, what's going on with this tooth because on the face of it, what you can see here is the tooth is completely um, untouched. Okay, I suppose in a way you look at this tooth and it's got it's 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 slightly darker than the rest of the teeth, um, but otherwise completely unrestored. But um, the patient had been having an aching pain from this tooth. Um, she'd also suffered a little bit of tenderness to percussion, and then when we did our uh, special tests. It was, there, was, there was pain on buccal palpation, meaning when we pressed up into the gum area where the root was, um, it was sore. And, and also with the electronic pulp tester, it was completely, um, it was just showing a negative result compared to the other teeth. So it's at this point you kind of think to yourself, well, what is going on here? And, and straight away my, my go-to uh, um, sort of diagnosis is, I've asked the patient, have you hit the tooth at all? And there was no suggestion at all that the tooth had been um had been knocked or traumatized, not not even a not even a sniff of any kind of trauma at all. And then it's only when you kind of do the intraoral um examination where you kind of have a little look at this unusual presentation on the palatal surface of this tooth here. Um so it's it there's a there, there's a cusp here and the, which which is unusual it's well it's not so unusual but it is but it is an unusual presentation you wouldn't necessarily see a cusp here and also what you kind of see is 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 near the coronal um uh, portion of this tooth it's it's kind of yellow and and i suppose if you've been a dentist for a while you kind of have this sixth sense for uh, decay underneath uh, enamel so i had a, a strong suspicion of um of 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 possibly there was decay underneath here due to uh, a densin dentate um presentation and and essentially all a densin dentate is is a folding over of the enamel okay and and the the, the problem with that is it's really really difficult to clean and it's really easy for bacteria to um, get into that kind of invagination of the enamel and cause decay. So the first thing we've got to do, of course, is um, is is place our rubber dam, and I'm going to use these fantastic kind of butterfly rubber dam clamps here. And it was actually quite a difficult rubber dam uh, to to place on because I couldn't quite get. Um, a nice seal over the tooth. So what I'm trying to do here is I am, um, I've obviously put the clamp on, I've put the rubber dam sheet on, and then what I'm doing is I'm opening up the clamp and try and let the, 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 the dam kind of push underneath. And it was seen here that I just couldn't quite get the seal out I wanted. So I'm gonna use this liquid dam here. So there are different types of liquid dam. You can get the kind of corking agent, which doesn't set, but I'm using this um, it's kind of, uh, it, 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 it flows like a, com a composite flow, but it's, but it's blue and it sets. And this sets a really, really kind of nice um, sort of, um, seal around the rubber dam. This is really important, of course, for um, our irrigation and making sure that the, 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 the working field is, is clear from any bacteria. So once we've got the rubber dam on, what I'm going to do is just cheekily use a high energy ultrasonic just to see if I can break the enamel here. Um, if I can just really carefully break the enamel of the back of this tooth, um, I can't, by the way. Um, it, it gives me a bit more control over the, 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 the decay removal, but in this case, I'm gonna have to use uh, a fast hand piece. Sometimes a fast hand piece can be just be a bit too destructive. And um, what I'm doing now is I'm kind of just sort of feeling around for this kind of drop. So you can see here in slow motion, as I'm using the fast hand piece, I break the enamel and I drop into um, the, the sort of soft dentin underneath. So I, I know now that there is decay here and you can see there's um, quite sig significant decay actually it, within, the, within the sort of uh, palatal aspect of this tooth. So um, to remove this type of decay is actually really, really tough because I suppose what you would do is you'd, you'd reach for your, um, 
your your slow handpiece so you'd use like a rose head but the problem of course with with a rose head a burr is that it's quite short isn't it so i've got these long neck rose head burrs that um i used to use prior to um getting my ultrasonic endodontic ultrasonics and what i'm doing here is i'm just removing the vast majority of the decay and i obviously want to be as um conservative as possible but i just obviously do want to remove all of the decay there um, and the, like I say, these long neck birds are fantastic because it you've got that kind of use of the rose head, but also you have the, the vision to see what you are actually removing. So we've exposed the orifice there. So we know we found um, the, the, the canal space. And the first thing really I want to do is just check there isn't a second um, uh, palatal canal because we know in, in these, uh, these sort of uh, dens and dentate, they can have their own separate canal that obviously sometimes have their own um, full canal or they join. Um, the radiograph uh, suggests that it doesn't have its separate um, canal space, but um, it's, it's always good just to check because obviously a, a radiograph is a 2D image. And I have um, just started to open up the, the canal orifice. It, 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 it obviously um, works out that there isn't a palatal canal. And I'm just using a high flex 25 um, variable taper uh, file just to, uh, just to open up that canal space. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and uh, gain a working length um, with this size 10K file. And in fact, I couldn't quite get all the way to the end. I couldn't get a zero reading on my apex locator. And the furthest I could get to was 22 millimeters. So obviously my go-to protocol with something like this is I'm gonna shape the tooth um, uh, with a high diameter file up to that point where I've got to. And um, with this, I found that there was a small ledge within the tooth. Um, so um, sometimes when you can't quite get um, a, uh, say, a, um, a hand file in, what, what you have to do is kind of make a, a small uh, kind of like bend in the tooth. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure that I've got patency with this size 10K file. And then a fantastic trick you can use here is um, with, the, uh, with, with the rotary files, if you make a little bend, get it past the ledge, and then place the uh, the endodontic motor onto the hand file, but not click it in place, it still works. And that kind of pushes out this, this ledge that's been either created or, or is already there. Um, you, you'd think that it, it'd pull away, but actually it, it fits quite nicely. So this is what I'm doing now, is I'm just trying to open up the ledge, trying to open up the, uh, the canal space to try and get my um, my, my uh, the, that zero reading on my apex uh, locator. Lots and lots of irrigation. And now I'm gonna use a size 25 variable at 21. So um, the furthest I got was 22. I'm going to use this at 21. I don't want to go too far. And I'm going to use the same technique where I'm just going to make a small bend in the file. And then I am going to just slowly feel around for the ledge, move past it, and then place my endodontic motor on top. And again, you'd be surprised. Um, sometimes it just clicks in by itself like it did here. And sometimes it doesn't click, but it doesn't matter. It still works. And again, I'm just shaping this canal space, trying to get that zero reading. So once I've opened up the canal space, I take another apex locator reading and I finally get uh, to that zero uh, mark, which is, a, which is a super, super nice feeling. And we can see actually the, the working length this tooth was 22.5. So we weren't, we weren't too far off. What's now important is we shape the tooth um, using our uh, 25 variable are our master apical file 0.5 millimeters away to account for the apical constriction and and again we had a little bit of a problem here with the ledge again so I'm just gonna make a tiny little bend and um, just having a little feel around it's it's quite difficult but because I have actually shaped this ledge out um, I don't have to use that kind of uh, trick where I take it off the motor and and then push it in but it is still a bit of a faff um, this is something that's significant we need to think about when we uh, do the obturation for the tooth as well. So I'm gonna when I when I when I do the uh, when I when I place my GP bone, I'm gonna put like a little bit of a bend in it, and we shape it all nicely.
So I'm going to go for the comfort radiograph. I'm going to measure my GP point here at 22. And um, when we place the GP point um, in the canal, um, see we've got a little bend in there, you'll notice that I am actually short of the working length. And it'd be really tempting here just to just to fill it, you know, because it's, it's near, near, enough, near enough, damn it. But uh, do you know what? It's really important um, that you make sure, I mean, it's, it's, it's blindly obvious, isn't it? You need to make sure that you've your obturation is all the way to the working length. So if your GP point isn't getting um, to your designated working length, you just reshape the canal, reshape the canal, irrigate, recapitulate with some hand files. And then as you can see here, when we place it to length, it goes to length. Okay, so it's always about doing a good job or doing a nice job for the patient. And when we take the um, comfort radiograph, we can see that this is a is a, is a is a super super nice result. So once we know that where um, the, the the cone is at the right length, um, now it's just dead simple. You know, we're going to use our uh, the same protocol I use for all teeth. We're going to um, irrigate and we're going to activate the irrigant with my 18th Ultra X Ultra Ultrasonic activator. And then we're gonna um, just dry the canal with paper points. You can see I put a little bend in that just to get past that kind of um, ledge or bend inside the canal, so it doesn't get doesn't doesn't get um, sort of caught in there. And then then and then if you're a regular reviewer of my uh, channel, I like to use a bioceramic. I use one fill with these visco tips. So these tips are fantastic. Um, they've got like kind of a, a sleeve on the end where you can fill the canal space. What I would say, um, try not to fill the canal space if you've got magnification because you can make it make a real uh, sort of pig's ear of this if you put too much uh, bite ceramic in there. And then um, again, just very, very, very slowly, we're going to push this GP to length. I, um, I'm kind of living on the seat of my pants here because really um, using a bioceramic, I should use a narrow taper um, GP point to stop taper lock. But I'm happy if I push it very, very slowly to the length. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the GP to, to, to all the way to the working length and and obturate this tooth perfectly. And then, you know, we just sear off the rest and give it a bit of a push down. And you can see here with the post op radiograph, it looks really, really, really nice. Um, you know, the patient was, she was a lovely girl. Um, and in fact, when we, uh, when, when I got her in for the second appointment after we'd had the consultation, she'd spoken to her brother and her brother had said that he'd had exactly the same thing. So that's, that's interesting and also quite satisfying from a kind of diagnosis point of view. Um, again, if you have any questions or really important, any criticisms with these videos, um, let's start a spark a debate uh, down below in the comments section um, and, and also tell me what you want to see. Um, I see lots and lots of endodontic cases each week. I, I always pick the most interesting ones. Of course, there are boring ones that don't make the cut. But if you're um, if you're interested in anything, you'd like to see anything, um, give us it, give us a comment, and and obviously please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I really might like making these videos. Um, all the subscriptions, all the likes, really spur me on to do more content. And I will see you next Friday. Bye bye.